Yes, this must be it, driver. Nags bottom. <laughs> ago. Most of the guests are already here. Colonel, so nice to see you and your niece again. <laughs> she will be served shortly. <laughs> niece. She won't get much out of him. He's old enough to be her father. <laughs> What's your excuse? <laughs> Just waiting for Monsieur Poirot, and then we can begin... Poirot? You don't mean you invited Hercule Poirot, the detective, here for the weekend? He's a very good friend of the bishop's. A man is a walking jinx, my dear. I mean, he's only got to set foot in a place and people get horribly murdered. Don't be so preposterous. What about that society wedding he was at last year? When six of the bride's family got slaughtered with a cake knife? <laughs> and that holiday hotel in Scotland, when four of the house guests choked to death on a septic haggis. <laughs> I'm not getting murdered. He comes to this house, my dear, over my dead body. <laughs> Once and for all, Sydney, he is not welcome under my roof. Too late. He's here already. Ah! Madame the Prestitute. <laughs> or is it Aphrodite, goddess of beauty? come to bestow her radiance upon our drab world of mortals. <laughs> but tell me, your charming consort, is he not with you also? Tell him I'm not here. Tell him it's been cancelled. Tell him I've got leprosy, anything, only get rid of me. <laughs> there you are, Mr. Poirot. <laughs> Doesn't the grass smell lovely this time of year? <laughs> Tea on the lawn awaits, Monsieur Poirot. We are all so looking forward to hearing some of your famous murder stories. Agatha's party was destined to end in tragedy, for one of the guests was already planning a fiendish murder, a murder so grisly, so diabolical, that... <laughs> what is the matter, Mr. Bultitude? Is something worrying you? Worrying me? Good heavens, no. Good heavens, no. Whatever made you think that? <laughs> Even as the guests were playing croquet on the lawn, the murderer had crept silently into the kitchen and laced the orange juice <laughs> with cyanide. <laughs> <laughs> Who could have guessed that the murderer was about to strike again? Who could have suspected that somewhere in the bushes the barrel of a gun was trained upon the poor victim's heart? Slowly, Relentlessly, the finger began to squeeze upon the trigger. Obviously, a put-up job. <laughs> uh, 
Supposing the killer had already left his victim a little present. Yes, my friends, lying there coiled beneath Sir Percy's desk was an assassin more deadly than any man, a black mamba. <laughs> Picked up his terror as slowly it slithered up his leg. Imagine the victim's horror, every fiber of his being frozen in mortal dread, as slowly it began to worm its way upward in its mission of death. Madame Beltitude, I fear I have discovered a minute speck of earwig dropping upon my pillow slip. No apologies. I'll just get you a fresh one. Oh. Mr. Bultitude, there is no need for you to keep hiding like this. Your fears of being murdered are completely groundless. Hide? Who oh, could have good of use hiding? I'm not. Really? <laughs> not one of your guests has any motive to murder you. I have been chatting with them. On the contrary, they are very fond of you. All of them are planning to leave you large sums of money in their wills. If anything, it is you who have a motive to murder them. Really? I mean, they act. Oh, <laughs> well, well, well. <laughs> I never was worried, of course. I'm not afraid of being killed. Me? <laughs> I was in the wall, though. Know? Not afraid of looking death in the face. Good heavens. Not after years of looking my wife in the face. <laughs> what was that? I don't want to spend the night with you, if you don't mind my name. Oh, no, you don't. Oh, you're spending the night with me. <laughs> of course, I suppose there are some fates worse than death. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Did you sleep well? Marvelous. Wonderful. Not a wink. <laughs> I can see why. I don't... <laughs> oh, 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 bless you. Hatch! Oh no! My heart! Oh, oh my god! He's dead! Watch that one! <laughs> What a lovely day. The sort of day that makes one glad to be alive. Doesn't it? Now then, I've done some lovely kippers for breakfast. Would you like one? Oh, you are most kind. <laughs> oh, 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 you prepare an excellent kipper, Madame Beltitude. <laughs> Flattery will get you everywhere, Monsieur Poirot. Oh, yes, a beautiful morning. A beautiful hostess. A well-turned kipper. What more can a man desire in his pursuit of paradise? Oh, Monsieur Poirot. Oh, 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 such pulchritude. It is your pulchritude that sets you aside from the multitude, Madame Pulchritude. Oh, Monsieur Poirot. Actually, there's um, a perfectly simple explanation for this. <laughs> I deduce, therefore, that all four deaths were meticulously planned. After the colonel had expired, the other three deaths were triggered off automatically. The niece grabbed at the loose wire, thus electrocuting herself. Uh, the lantern crashed down upon the bishop's head, and he, in turn, fell forward onto Miss Tabitha, plunging the knitting needles into her chest. A simple chain reaction. But how to kill the colonel in the first place? 
the answer lay in his allergy to cats. The cat made him sneeze, and the sneeze after his nocturnal insomnia was too much for his poor weak heart. Only one problem remained. What would make the cat jump upon his lap in the first place? And the answer is the smell of kippers. And whose idea was it to serve kippers? Yes, Mrs. Bertitude, you! You kill those four people as surely as if you had gunned them down in cold blood by serving kippers for breakfast. <laughs> you planned it all last night after our conversation so that you and your husband could inherit the money. What? Take her away, constable. Let me go. Let me go, I tell you. It's all lies. Help! Police! <laughs> Well, that certainly worked a treat. <laughs> yes, you played your part beautifully, Mr. Bultitude. She will be found guilty, and she will go down for 20 years at least. <laughs> worked exactly as you said it would. I'm now finally free of the old bat. <laughs> oh, pity, mind you, about the guests. Uh, it's a pity about the digitalis that found its way into the Colonel's conflicts this morning. It's a pity about the faulty wiring, but uh, there we are. <laughs> By the way, I think you can safely drop the accent now. Oh, I, I think I can at that. <laughs> I know you're not Hercule Poirot. You are, in fact, Albert Finney. <laughs> <laughs> it's a damn good job none of them have seen the movie, won't it? <laughs> hey, cheers, Vivian. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs>